There were many great contributions to society by the wheat farmer, such as inventions like the twine binder and reaper thrasher, but things weren't always so hunky-dory. Life went all peachy. We had many problems, including profitability, isolation, and modern nature. It all started back when the government had issued their Homestead Act of 1862. We could get as much as 160 acres of land after living on it for more than five years and paying about $30. But 160 acres was nothing more than a damn joke. 160 acres was a pitiful amount of land for the amount that it produced. We were also out in the middle of nowhere. Yes. Not a damn thing for a mile around. I was getting to that. They were stuck out in the middle of nowhere with civilization literally hundreds of miles away. We are lucky when that railroad came up by our place. Yep. The railroad played a huge role in developing the West, bringing out more settlers which in turn helped the farmers deal with isolation and also giving them an easier option for shipping. The railroad helped bring in supplies. It was much easier to order things from the search catalog and there's also this kind of magic wheat that grew through drought. It was nice to have wheat that grew. About two thirds of the farmers had to give up because of the drought, but the wheat that was resistant to drought gave them new hope. I was all expecting to pack up and abandon the place when the magic wheat came in. It was the only thing that kept me going. Additionally, with so much work to do, they had hardly any time to congregate. So one of the best ideas that they had was to build churches located so that everyone in the area could go to the same church on Sunday and get to know each other. Along with isolation, much of the areas where wheat farms were located were barren of water. Federal financing came in to irrigate waterways and set up dams. I also got me a banjo from the Sears catalog. Cost me six eighty-five, but it got me and my buddies many of hours entertainment. More than half of trying to figure out how to play the damn thing too. Yo, Chris, want to come down here and ask a few wheat farm questions? What do you do with this here, what's my call it? What do you want me to say? Talk about how hard it was to get a profit. A what's it? A profit, like money. Oh, yar, money was a damn biggie too. We didn't have much because we were rather small farm. And most of it, what we did, went to the government in taxes and tariffs. We had to get all the land and just pay it, pay the damn taxes. But we didn't what we could. We had to order a farm wagon in order to, from the Sears catalog, so we could move things around more efficiently. Cost of a whooping was four dollars and seventy-three cents. Once we figured out that wheat and corn sell like freaking hotcakes, most of us just stuck to growing those. Profitability was a big challenge when large-scale farmers grew and drove many marginal farmers off of their land. This was brought about by high prices and the inventions of the twine binder in the 1870s and the combine in the 1880s. All this dealing with money needed some first-class management. As a result, the farmers commonly blamed losses on banks and railroads. We never was good at numbers, but we could tell that the railroad was charging more than it needed. As me, only choice was to hire a damn banker to do the banking. Lost me most of my money. Railroads were charging so much, we lost money on shipping. It was also hard to make money when all these damn cattle ranchers kept killing off the crop. They'd just come on right through your fields, destroying everything in their path, trampling down the wheat and corn. One time I got chased off by one of them damn sheep herders and started throwing their baby sheep around. Then I got me an idea. I bought myself a baby sheep and started lifting it till I was stronger than them. Then I got me a cow and trained off that. That were some nice suppers after I was finished with them too. Then I got hulky and started throwing cows around. Those jerks never stay long. I even got me a telescope from Sears for a buck ninety. That way I could see them every day when they're over yonder. Look, there's one now.
Um, yeah, they called him the Hulk. There were other more practical methods, such as building a fence to keep them out too. Them, them cattle ranchers never cared, cared for a damn thing of other people's property, destroying everything in them paths. I eventually built a wooden fence. N never worked too well though. They usually just went right on through the fence, not minding it. Cattle ranchers and sheep herders weren't the only problem that they were facing. There were numerous things that Mother Nature mercilessly threw at them. Grasshopper clouds, almost a mile wide, savagely ransacked the land. Erosion was stripping away the fertile soil in floods, so fertilizers were needed. In the summer of 1887, whole towns were abandoned because of a drought. Land was also overassessed, and overly high local taxes followed. I'll never forget that summer, me and Simon were just sitting outside in our log, minding our own business, and we heard a ginormous buzz. We looked over yonder and saw a ginormous cloud of grasshoppers. Quick went inside, but didn't do no good though. They just ate right through the curtains and left nothing for us in the fields. After that, summer just got harder and drier. I had to dry, plant a windrow of trees just to stop the water and wind erosion. Didn't work too well though. Got so hot, killed the trees off. I had to replant them the next year. Didn't do, didn't do no good till at least 10 years later though, when they, once they got biggered. Native Americans also posed an intimidating threat. I hate engines. All they do is try to kill you and then they go smoke around their fire. We had to do something. We started the National Grange of the Patrons of Husbandry, or he could have called it the Grange. The great Mr. Oliver H. Kelly started it in 1867. Oliver Kelly wanted to enhance lives of isolated farmers through social, educational, and fraternal activities. We needed our education to make us more civilized. Ugh. In 1875, there were 800,000 members. I didn't know there was a number that ginormous. Uh, yes there is. As to escape the clutches of trust, he instituted co-ops, grain elevators, and warehouses. They even attempted to manufacture farm machinery, but that was a financial disaster. They later started a political party called the Greenback Labor Party. Vote Greenback. Vote Greenback. Vote Greenback. Vote Greenworth. <laughs> Vote Greenback! It didn't turn out all negative though. Inventions that the wheat farmers contributed included the reaper thrasher, the combine, and the twine binder. They also added the concept of a family farm where a farm is owned and operated by generations of the same family. That way, I could see even when they were over yonder. Look, there's one now. What do you want me to say? A prophet? A prophet? What do you want me to say? A prophet? We good at numbers, but we could tell the railroad was just charging more than it needed. And only me choices what was to hire. And this is why I don't do movies. I'll never forget that summer when me and Sally May were just sitting outside in our lot. And all of a sudden we 
so I had to plant me a windrow of trees. Didn't work too well, though. The quick went inside, but didn't do no good, though. They just ate right through the curtains. 